Are you using the Curves tool in your photo editing software to its full potential? Perhaps you're not aware of everything that Curves can do and when to use it. Hi, I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor and in this video tutorial, you'll learn six quick tips on how to use the Curves tool. And if you stick around to the very end, I'll show you a neat bonus trick. So if you're ready to start learning about Curves, let's begin. Before we get started, I just want to talk a little bit about software. I'm going to use Luminar Neo for the majority of this tutorial to demonstrate. However, any photo editing software that has a Curves tool works exactly the same way. I'll show you briefly how it works in Lightroom and where to find Curves. You can also use Curves in Photoshop, on one, and in many other programs. So you can follow along with me regardless of the photo editing program that you're using. To find the Curves tool in Luminar Neo, just open your image in the Edit panel and go to the Develop tool under Essentials. If you're using a RAW file, you'll be working with Develop RAW. Scroll down in the sections until you see Curves. It may be collapsed like you see mine here. To open it, just click the little triangle. Now let me show you briefly where to find it in Lightroom. When you're in the Develop module in Lightroom, Tone Curve is right here on the right hand side. Unless you've reordered them, it's the second one down right below Basic. Now you can see that the Curves tool here looks very similar to what we see in Luminar. Each one has a grayscale curve and red, green, and blue. Look for the same options in your photo editing software. One thing you need to know about the curve is that it uses the histogram as well. You'll notice that you can see the histogram graph in the background of the curve here. You can also see the histogram up here. So take what you know about the histogram and apply that to curves. That is that the blacks are on the left side and the whites are on the right side, with medium gray or midtones being in the middle. Once you understand that, then we can start to make adjustments to the curve. Once you've found the Curves tool, let's dig in to the tips. Number one, you can use Curves to darken or lighten your image. I'm using a grayscale image here just to show you how it works. The curve currently is a straight line. If you grab the middle of it and bring it up, you will lighten the image. Bringing it down darkens. The advantage here over using curves versus the exposure or some of the other sliders is that you have more fine control over which part of the image you're brightening and darkening. For example, when I'm grabbing the middle like this, it's affecting the midtones. If you grab closer to the right side, you're affecting more of the highlights. Likewise, down low, you're affecting more of the shadow areas. That brings us to tip number two, using an S-curve to increase or decrease the contrast in your image. As you learned a minute ago, you can put one dot on the curve and brighten or darken certain areas. To create an S-curve, you just need to add a second point. To do that, just add the first point and drag it up to increase the brightness of the highlights. Then go to the shadow area, click on the curve again, this time drag it down. Now, do you see what shape the line has taken? It looks like the letter S, hence the name S-curve. An S-curve increases contrast. The steeper the curve, the more contrast. So if I increase both of these adjustments, you see that the curve gets steeper, as in more vertical, and there's more contrast on the image. If we go the opposite direction, just double click in this case to reset the points, let's lower the highlight area, so darkening this part, and brighten the shadow areas. Now the curve is sort of an inverted or upside down S, and the contrast on the image is lower. Notice how all of these tones are closer to mid-tone gray? Let's see how we can apply this to an actual image. 
On this image of the seagull, you'll notice that it's rather flat. There's not a lot of contrast. There's nothing white and there's nothing black. So to increase the contrast, we want to create the S-curve. Let's start here with one point, make a second one to create the S. Notice it is now spread out the histogram, meaning there's more range of tones. We can increase it further by tucking in the endpoints as well. Depending on your software, there may be some points at the bottom like this, or you may have to grab the one on the side. Remember, left is black, so the further in you go, the more black you get. Right is white, so the same is true when you come in on that side. If we look at the clipping warnings, now you can see that the white part of the bird is clipped or off the graph, as well as the black parts of the wings. So you can use this information to adjust what's called the white and the black point. So I like to clip a little bit of black, but keep the white in check. To do that, I just need to adjust this endpoint until the white's not clipping anymore and perhaps lower this a little bit. There we go. So you can see that there's many ways to create and adjust the curve to add contrast. The other thing I want you to make note of is that as we increase the contrast even further, let's just deepen the S curve a little bit. What do you notice about the color of the image now? It's intensified or saturated. You'll also notice there's no saturation slider in sight here. This is a really important thing to make note of. When you are working with color in your images, when you want increased color or intensity of color, make sure that you have more contrast, specifically more blacks in your image. Recently, I did a live stream all about editing and adjusting color in your images. There's lots of great tips in there for you on this topic. I'll put a link in the description area below so you can watch that video later. Let's look at another example for tip number three, and that is using Curve to target your contrast adjustment to a specific area of your image. For example, in this image, I want to darken it overall, so I could just add one point like so and call it done. However, that makes it look a little bit flat. So let's make sure that I have contrast in the midtones without blowing out the highlights or the shadows. Because if I wanted to create an S curve overall like this, the whole image gets pretty contrasty really fast. So let's keep the S curve tighter together and just keep it in the midtones here, in the middle of the graph, in this middle third. So I'm adjusting an S curve here and then putting a third and fourth point, maybe even a fifth point, to keep the rest of the curve a little bit flatter. Now there's more contrast in the middle section of the graph. Likewise, we could move the whole thing down. So if I want more contrast in the shadows down here like this, let's keep this part of the graph straight and add some contrast down here in the shadows. Now you could see more contrast in this area. If you're enjoying this video and my teaching style, you might want to check out Luminar Neo, the complete course, where I teach all of the tools inside Luminar Neo step by step and how to bring it together. If you need to purchase Luminar Neo or you want to add it to your workflow, use our discount code DPM10 or use the link below before February 15th to get 30% off when you purchase Luminar Neo. Let's continue on with quick tip number four, and that is you can use curves to create a faded or matte black look for your images. This is a really popular style if you want sort of an antique look. All you need to do to create that look is go to the dot on the left hand side, which is black, and bring it up on the side. The further you go, the lighter, actual black becomes. So you're setting a different point for black by doing this. Black now is somewhere around dark gray. You'll notice if I continue going, it starts to become lighter than what I have over here. 
so we can really create a faded out look using curves. I landed on something like this for this image. Likewise, you can also do the same with white. Remember, it needs to come down the side. So as you bring this down, white is becoming gray. Let's take a closer look at how that works on the grayscale image. Notice this is pure black. As I bring this point up the side, it starts to lighten not only the black point, but everything above it as well. If I bring the white point down, it starts to darken white into a light gray. As we keep going, you'll notice that eventually, somewhere in the middle, they're going to meet and the entire image is going to be just gray. Oops, remember I have a bonus tip for you at the end. This is kind of foreshadowing, so stay tuned. We've got two more tips to go. Tip number five is you can use curves to correct an unwanted color tint in the highlights or the shadows of your image. Let's see how that works. In this particular image, I've already adjusted the exposure and brightness, but I find that the shadows feel a little bit blue. This is where you get into using some of the color curves. So far, we've only looked at the grayscale one. Now, if I want to add some color, I can choose one of these. I'm going to start with blue. The same principles that we used on the grayscale curve apply here as well. As I increase this, it brightens areas and adds more blue. As I lower it, it darkens and adds more yellow or the opposite color. That's exactly what I want to play out here in the shadows. So I can either bring it in this way or just tuck in the curve. But if I want to keep the water nice and white, for example, I want to make sure that the highlights are back on the straight line. So I just bring them back up. And if I want the water to be even bluer, I can just cross the line. Now I have blue water and more warmth in the shadows. You can also use the green curve to add or subtract green. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of green in the black area. So if you've ever had an image where you've got a strange color tint in the shadows and you're having a hard time correcting it, consider using the curves tool. That brings us to tip number six, using curves to adjust color creatively. You can go really wild and create some fun abstracts using the color curves. I'm going to demonstrate using this color wheel example. Once again, let's go to one of the color curves. So let's start with blue. Remember when we drag this curve down, we're creating yellow in the highlights. So let's do that and go a little bit crazy with the blue this way. Notice how the colors have gone completely bizarre and the curve is a little bit strange, but we're not done yet. Let's continue playing. Let's just put some random points and even do some things like crisscrossing. You see how bizarre it's getting? Now let's see how that plays out on an actual image. Back to this image of the stairs. I want to add some cyan in the highlights and some red in the shadows. This is the easiest way to create what's called a duotone. Note that if you change the image to black and white first, let's do that, and then go apply a curve, now you have a black and white duotone. So the color curves work even after you've applied black and white. This technique may vary from one photo editing software to another. If black and white means you've changed the image into grayscale, there's no color pixels left. So try it with your software and see what happens. Let's try blue doing the same thing. Blue and yellow, or the opposite. Yellow highlights and blue shadows. But like the curve that I did on the color wheel, let's get a little bit more creative. I've added a really steep S curve on the general grayscale curve, so we've increased the contrast. Then I'm gonna go back to blue and go a little crazy. Let's do something like this, and we can even put additional points. See what's happening? Now let's see, I want a little bit of magenta in there somewhere. 
somewhere in there maybe. And now we've created something that's kind of like a posterization or solarization. There's different terms for this type of look, but it's really creative and you can have some fun with it when you're working with an abstract kind of image. So don't be afraid to experiment with the color curves. Play some dots and go wild. Just see what happens. Now before I show you the bonus tip, I just want to ask you a quick question. Have you used curves very often in the past? And what about now? After you've watched this video, are you going to be using curves more often? Let me know in the comment area below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Okay, are you ready for the bonus tip? When you have an image like this that you might like to use as a grunge edge or a border on another image, you can add it as a layer. But what if you want it the opposite? In this example, we have black edges and white center. But what if you want white edges and black center? Let's apply this image over top of another as a layer and see how that works. Here's the borders image applied over the seagull. When I change the blending mode to normal and the opacity to 100, now you see just the edge image. If we change the blend mode to multiply, now we have a black edge on the image. But what if we want the opposite? No problem, curves to the rescue. So change the blend mode back to normal for now. Head down to the develop tool and make sure curves is open and you're on the grayscale curve. Now, do you remember when we brought the black point up and the white point down and they met in the middle to make gray? Well, let's take it a step farther. So I'm going to take the black point on the left all the way up. You notice the blacks are getting lighter and lighter and lighter until they become white. Now let's do the opposite on this side. We're going to bring the whites darker and darker and darker until they become black, essentially inverting the image into a negative of itself. Now when we go back to layer properties, we can choose lighten or one of the other blend modes to have a white edge. That's a neat trick, right? It's also handy if you're scanning film. If you have any old negatives that you want to archive and you're scanning them and bringing them into your photo editing software and they show up as a negative, just invert the curve like this and your problem is solved. Likewise, you don't have to have two of all of your grunge edges, one black and one white. All you need is one and you can just invert it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on using the curves tool. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. To watch another video here on YouTube, just click one on the screen now. Until next time, take care and have fun playing with curves.